is falling apart right here, right there, right there, right there, right there, everywhere, and here on the stereo. We're gonna talk about this beautiful 2015 Ferrari California T. What means T? Means it's a turbo engine, not natural inspiration. So, as you might know, Ferrari has this beautiful red key, famous knowing, but since it's a 2015, they still don't have a uh, Kelly's Go system. I think they, they came with Kelly's Go back in uh, 2017 only. This beautiful 2015 Ferrari California T has a quite huge history. So basically this car was sold brand new back in Texas in 2015 and after it went to California. After that it went to Florida. After that it went back to California and now back to Las Vegas, Nevada. So let's see what's happened with this car over those eight years of the life and if it's still kind of exotic car. So there are several points I do love about this car a lot and several I don't like it at all. So number one, that's the cheapest Ferrari you can buy on the market right now. Even at the auction or retail, you can find a lot of them for sale because the people kind of want to sell it and get something else. So number two, that's the car supercar which has four seats so you can put your kids or you can put maybe one or two uh family member in the car and drive around or take it to pch if you are in la or maybe somewhere else so what i don't like that's the cheapest ferrari ever not ever but the cheapest ferrari in those kind of years so you can buy basically that you drive in the ferrari and everybody knows that's the famous ferrari brand but everybody knows that's the cheapest one on the market and not so many people love it. So it's a California T. The T, it's because this car has V8 3.9 engine with turbo charger. And that's quite of the point why it's not so famous because turbo am I gonna give you constant problems and the chicken engine light am I gonna be on. As a, again, as I say before, when we were checking different cars, when you drive an exotic or you see someone who's driving exotic, it's kind of normal for them and for the owner of the car when you do have a lot of different lights on the cluster and the dashboard with different kind of errors and uh, warning lights. So that's why Turbo California, it's not so popular. But same time, it's the cheapest one convertible you can buy. So basically for the 120, 130,000, what else you can get? You can get the new Mercedes electric, uh, which is not the same and it's not the Ferrari. So we do have this beautiful color. It's called Rosso California. And again, according to the Carfax, because I check it before I start looking at the car, it was one accident with several damages all around the car. That's why I'm not gonna go around and tell you, you know, there's a gap right here, there's a damage, there's a crack. It's always gonna be cracks. It's always gonna be damage and scratches here all over because it's normal for exotic car, especially if this car has a kind of quite huge history, been moving all around the States. And now it landed here in Nevada and probably after two, three years, this car is going to be sold again to a new owner because I think the guys, they're going to be smart enough to squeeze some juices and just get over, get something newer. But again, when you come into the car, what you're going to see, you're going to see the leather, the Italian leather on the dashboard. And it's already kind of getting so old, older than you and older than the car itself, because you're going to see a lot of spots of the plastic and basically the leather on the dashboard already squeezed because it's too hot to be outside. And Ferrari as a McLaren doesn't like it at all. So let's see if it's easy to work on the engine itself. I mean, if you want to do some things and you want to be like a mechanic who owns exotic car. So under the hood, we do have a lot of space white things you can maybe maybe do yourself i can see the coils audi volkswagen they they super similar and maybe some people are gonna say no it's totally different no it's not it is the same and all the connectors i can see that's a vw probably those on the top of the engine there is a high pressure fuel pumps sitting on the left and the right just to give you more fuel when you step in the gas because it, it is a turbo engine and uh, you need a lot of gas to do that kind of performance. There is air filters, you can replace it yourself. 
Even probably the airflow mass sensors, which is Bosch, I think it's similar or maybe part number is the same as a VW. There is a VW throttle bodies. What else I can see from VW? Maybe some other sensors, maybe the filter even uh, goes from kind of Audi or Volkswagen. I have no idea, never done maintenance on this kind of car. But I had the Ferrari FF 2012 before and it was an all-wheel drive V12 car and it was beautiful car besides four seats it was just a nice coupe with some space in the trunk and it's it was a, such a beautiful car i'm still regretting because i sold it and i should keep it maybe one day i'm gonna buy the ferrari ff and share it with you how was my experience with v12 ferrari but v8 3.9 twin turbo engine it's just not my kind of type of car so as a condition of this car right now, it has PPF on it. So right on the top, uh, on the back of the car, this fender doesn't have it, or maybe, no, just a little bit. So the roof, half of it, the whole front end, they put PPF on it, which is really good because every rock gonna go to the hood, you have to paint it. But the paint job kind of expensive on exotic cars and everybody who owned it before or own it right now, they do know. I mean, if you want to do the paint job on this car for $300, you're just going to be not that type of guy who can keep the exotic car maintained well. So one of the good points, this car has the ceramic brakes. It's uh, actually ceramic carbon brakes. So why they are good? Because they're not overheating. They can stop the car even on the track. So that means very well performed cars, they're supposed to have these brakes. Not just the McLaren, the Ferrari, maybe some of the Audis too, because the brakes are super important for you as a driver, especially if you want to drive it on a high speed. So the design of the car, it's really famous and everybody knows you driving the Ferrari if you're going to pass by because of the taillights, because of the shape of it, the shape on the back, on the front. And a lot of Ferraris like Ferrari California, for example, it is similar to Ferrari FF. If you're going to take a look from the side or from the back, it's just a famous known Ferrari and it's super nice, super good. So it has a stock, uh, bone stock exhaust on it. And you might gonna say, oh, it's a nice huge pipes, but it's not. It's just a fake pipe sitting here and exhaust actually sitting right behind the bumper. So basically what it means, if you're gonna remove the bumper for some reason, to change something or to paint, to add some uh, AutoZone parts on it, if you uh, that kind of guy, you're gonna see those parts of exhaust gonna come out together with the bumper. So that means it is a fake exhaust and exhaust itself sitting on the back, but it's still loud, it's still super, nice sound that exhaust system so what we do have in the trunk since it is a convertible we do not have enough space for a lot of different stuff but again if you're not planning to open your top and you want to do some grocery you can put it on not a problem there is still some bags left in the car but the cover itself i think it's missing maybe it's somewhere in the garage but there is a air compressor there is some tools that means ferrari telling you you know keep some tools keep some screwdrivers uh you might gonna need them and it has a ferrari sign on it that's super good maybe it is expensive you can sell it on ebay and get some money this part i did see it before everybody knows if you don't know check the honda video you're gonna find out what it is for so as this car has a four seats, you might gonna put your kids in the back. Is it enough space to put the stroller? I would say again, if you're not planning to open the top, you wanna put the stroller and put the kids in the back, you can do that. That's super nice, super cool. The trunk itself, it's super light since the car plastic and aluminum because it's supposed to be high performance exotic Ferrari. That's what it's made for. So let's see how fast I can open the roof on this car together with starting it so how to start it it's quite simple pam 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 you have to just turn the key manually and push the start button now you're in the car ah check engine light on that's super nice as i say exotic cars they are made to be with the car and with the lights all the time it's kind of fast. It took maybe 10 seconds. 
15 seconds to open the roof. Steering wheel, it is right here. You can adjust your suspension. You can adjust the way you drive in the car and you can do some other things, but the button's already sticky and you can see it right here. Ay, 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 Ferrari, Ferrari, why are you doing it? I do not know. Is it sticky on the side? It is super sticky right here, but you're not gonna use your emergency brake, maybe sometimes for the computer buttons, they're already sticky and the lights and the side of the column, steering column, it's already sticky, not falling apart, but it is sticky. It is it sticky here? Yes, it is falling apart right here, right there, right there, right there, right there, everywhere and here on the stereo. So how come you get in such expensive unit and all those things already in bad condition? Climate control, it is the same, all the sticky buttons, the paint already peeling off. I don't like it. I don't like it because every time when you're touching it, you're feeling it like you're driving kind of junk car. But it is a Ferrari, you have to appreciate it because you just paid a lot of money for rental or you just paid a lot of money to buy it and you own it because nobody sells used car, especially Ferrari with kind of warranty you can return it. After several days, no, it's not. You're gonna buy it and you're gonna keep it you're gonna enjoy it even if you don't like it you have to because number one you don't have the other choice and number two it's not so easy to sell the car as a Ferrari California not so many people dreaming about this car right now so it looks like it's all good with this car right now and it has only 19,000 miles on it and we are on the auto mode It's kind of quiet. The engine works super nice for 19,000 and looks like it's been well maintained. So what's cool about it? Number one, <coughs> the steering wheel itself, it is made super good. There is, a, uh, there is a carbon fiber pieces. There is a lot of functions like the horn buttons. They are right on the steering wheel itself, not in the middle like all the cars. The turn signal, it is on the buttons left and right. It's made on the sides, not in one spot like the Lamborghini or Tesla. What else? The push start button, the suspension adjustment and the sport mode. It's all on your steering wheel. That's kind of cool. So it's it going to give you a lot of cool feelings about the car when you just sit inside and turn in the steering wheel itself. I'll tell you a simple example of the dual clutch. That's the Ford Focus. Yeah, for those people who didn't know before, Ford Focus has a dual clutch transmission. And every time when the clutch going bad, your transmission won't go forward or reverse just because the clutch won't touch discs between itself and can it send them torque from the engine to the transmission to move your car so what you have to do every time you're doing maintenance on the Ford Focus you have to check your clutch position and adjust it so it's really easy and on the Ford Focus if you're gonna do adjustment for the clutch every five ten thousand miles your clutch is gonna be surprisingly fine for a long period of time maybe 400 150,000 miles, maybe even more. I did see a lot of Ford Focuses of 200 plus thousand miles and the clutch on those cars was original. So same thing with all the exotic cars and high-end cars. They do have a dual clutch system and every time you're doing maintenance, I would recommend check it and adjust it. If you do have, or your mechanic has a special tools, basically the computer, which you can plug it in and program it. So what you're doing, you're just adjusting the clutch because over the time, the clutch itself, the discs getting worn, but it's still shifting on the same position as a new one, which is not right. That's the simple explanation. I mean, there is a huge explanation how the system works and you can Google it, type it in. But what I'm telling you, if you do have a computer, you can adjust the clutch and it's gonna keep working a long period of time as a 
90,000 miles, I would do it already. So right now we do have a malfunction. That's a ESC system fail. This traction control light on. Uh, AVH system fail. Ta -da! It's just a Ferrari and it's kind of normal. The good point, your engine is still okay. My engine on this car is still okay. And it's running with no sound. And I am I gonna step on the gas a little bit. You can drive it on the auto mode, which the car is right now, but you can go to manually. There's a second speed. I mean, uh, 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 2013 Tesla P85 performance. Kind of doing better in my opinion. Maybe because I drove that car all the way from Los Angeles to Las Vegas right now. But maybe just because this Ferrari needs some attention. I can tell it's just a poor maintenance because the people not ready to spend money for those kind of things on a car. So the question is, if the people who own those exotic cars, they don't want to spend money to fix it, to do the well maintenance on it, Who's gonna spend money on it? You? You are the next who's gonna buy it and uh, have a lot of money on the bank account just to spend on the car because it was your dream car and you were dreaming to buy it for last five, seven, ten years and now you bought it and now you see the car, it's in a shape where you have to spend not more but half of the price you paid for the car. Are you gonna pay it? Definitely not. So what are you gonna do like most of the people do and that you're just gonna buy it and keep driving it until the car gonna stop completely. And believe me, I do have those kind of friends who bought those kind of cars and especially California. For example, I have three people, I have three friends, not so close, but three people who I know who has a shop and they were saying, oh, what's the, what's the big deal? I'm gonna just buy an Unrunner Ferrari California with low mileage because it was announced low mileage in the co part just because it's not runner it's either has a clean title or the car has salvage title for some kind of things maybe mechanical problem or somebody scratch it on the left right side and those guys like oh you know i bought a nice california from copart for fifty thousand, and it just missing the key and has some scratches on the sides and they've been telling me that afterwards after they bought the car and i was telling them you know just be careful just be careful, just pay attention and uh, you're probably going to spend more money than you expected. And they're like, no, 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 I'm just going to do the key and those scratches painted and that's it. So thank you so much for watching it. And uh, it was a Ferrari California T, which I hope never going to buy in my life. I hope you're going to do the same. Thank you for watching it. Put some thumbs up and do some comments below. See you next time. Oh,